with a DVF 5000 and we're continuing on with our 316 stainless part. In previous videos, we've already shown you the material prep operation and taking a high feed mill and decking off all that excess material. Now we're gonna come in and rough out the outside profile, finish everything. We got some really cool modular drills that we're gonna come in and drill out all the holes with. We're gonna come in after the drills and do some pocketing. We're gonna take it all the way up until we're ready to bore out the large diameter hole. I'm also gonna be giving you some tips and tricks along the way that is specific to five axis machining. So stick around because you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. Now for this operation, we're using Kinemetal's inch and a quarter diameter indexable drill. We're running at 600 SFM and 6,000 speed per revolution. This is a perfect curly Q chip from that inch and a quarter drill. This is exactly what you want to see. All right, made it through no problem. Now we're going to come in and start roughing the outside profile. Since we're not running through the spindle coolant, I knew this tool was gonna to have a hard time getting these chips out of that hole. So what I did is I broke the depth up into two separate depths. That made the chips a lot shorter and easier for it to blow the chips out. When it comes to five axis machining, there's a lot of things that come into play. There's your center of rotation, your work offset, even your tool length offset becomes extremely important. This part we're making has two holes on the side of the part, which is dimensioned back to the top face, which happens to be my datum A. Well, if my face mill comes in and it takes too much material off that top face, then my holes on the side are gonna be shifted. Now, I've seen a lot of people that would put these holes on a different work offset and adjust them individually, but what we can do is machine a qualifying feature for the face mill that we can actually measure and then go in, make an adjustment before we deck that top face and set that data. We just machined our qualifying feature, so let's get in and measure it. So we're measuring about five thousandths over what I programmed that feature to be. So we're gonna adjust our tool down half of that at two and a half thousandths because we're cutting both sides. And then we'll be ready to finish the top face. So now that face mill is coming in and finishing that top face. And since we verified that tool length, I know that it's establishing that datum right where it needs to be. section we're going to use the Kinemetal Kin Tip. The first is an HPLM which is 140 degree tip. The second is an FEG which is a flat bottom drill. What's special about the Kin Tip is it has two notches on the top of the insert for a special tool from Kinemetal to twist it into place. And what's really great about this style is you can change this tip while the tool is still in the machine. There's no need to remove it. The other thing you notice with this style tool is that it has carbide all the way around the tip, which reduces wear on the pocket seat, so therefore you get more life out of the drill body itself. We're also gonna be using Kinemetal's KSEM modular drill. This insert is seated with a screw that's tightened through the back of the drill body. Now, thanks to the added security of the screw, the KSEM has the strongest pocket of any modular drill Kinemetal has, making it ideal for heavy machining applications. This first kin tip drill that we're using is an eight times D drill. That is the length to diameter ratio. Now for this length of drill, we don't have to spot drill, but it is recommended that we slow the feed rate down to 50% until the insert is fully engaged. Then you can ramp up to full feed rate. Mastercam made this simple to do by using their advanced drill tool path. 
Now we're coming in with a 25 millimeter Ken Tip FEG drill, which is a flat bottom. We're gonna come in through the sides and drill all the way through to the bottom of the pocket. Now this pocket has a very small width to depth ratio, and I'm worried that when we start roughing it out, we're gonna start packing chips and it's gonna end up breaking my tool. So what we're gonna do instead is come in with a KSEM drill and do what's called chain drilling. This is gonna take the bulk of the material out of the pocket in a very efficient way. Come in with a half inch Harvey 1TE and rest rough the remaining stock in the pocket. Then we're going to rotate over to the side and rough the minor diameter of the threaded hole as well as the 45 degree angle inside the bore. guys that's going to do it for this video the parts coming along really nicely hope you guys learned something in the next video we're going to be taking the best boring tool that i have ever used and finish out this bore we're going to finish the pockets finish the threaded holes we're even going to get into some five axis simultaneous work on this part so subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next video thank you all for watching we'll see y'all next time